Simple video for today. Hi, everybody. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. I was asked recently in a YouTube comment, why does anybody mess around with Morse code? It was on my video that I did recently doing a one-point soda activation where I mostly activated it using Morse code. Now, I have talked about this in the past, but I feel like I have a more practical example that's probably a little bit easier to follow. So this week, I brought my KX2, Elecraft KX2, kind of go box little modular kit to work. And I had an hour where I didn't have a meeting. I almost always have a meeting throughout the day. I had time where I could go grab a lunch, go out in the patio, very wide patio area, set up the AX1 antenna, and actually, you know, participate in probably chasing a poda or two. And, and I was right. There was a number of podas on 20 meters, both for single sideband and for CW. Now, I want everybody to not just focus on the poda aspect of this, but focus on what I'm saying when I'm talking about modes of operation and the ability to communicate. So I started out using single sideband to try and chase a pod activation. In fact, there was three that I tried to make contacts with. And while the stations weren't that far away from me, I really didn't have the power to get through to them. And yes, you can blame some of this on the AX1 antenna being a loaded, compromised vertical antenna. Highly portable, but still compromised. Now, in my multiple attempts on every one of these people calling CQ, two things were happening. Now, the first thing that can happen is because it's a parks on the air and that individual has a lot of people that are trying to make a contact with them, you just can't get over their power level. You're, you're, you're drowned out. You're in the noise. They're just so much more powerful that that's the station that the activating station can hear. So you're out of luck, right? You can be stubborn and you can continue to call and you eventually might make it through. But I was having problems with problem issue two. <laughs> Issue two is where I'm just not making it. I don't have the power to make it to that station. And so in those situations, you really only have two choices. In the case of the AX1 portable antenna from Elecraft being compromised, I wasn't getting the most amount of my signal out, which of you know is a bummer, but it is also a byproduct of choices I made in accepting that compromise for a much more packable radio setup. Now, when I switched over to Morse code, that's a whole different story. Not only am I hearing the stations louder into the radio because they're just transmitting in this small little bandwidth space, I'm also getting out to them in a way that they can actually hear me. And even on that compromised antenna surrounded by buildings, I was able to chase a POTA contact with it. And there was a couple other stations, uh, one in particular, that could kind of hear me, but we couldn't, we couldn't complete the contact. And I blame myself because I'm not that strong of a CW operator. So the point here is, is that Morse code, remember this quote, right? And, and this isn't 100% accurate in all situations, but if you had the same setup, so same antenna, and you took a 100 watt radio, or maybe even the same radio, 100 watts of single sideband, against a 5, even 10 watt QRP radio, so running CW, single sideband, CW, they're almost the same in capability. So that means that your little QRP radio, sometimes those super little small ones like the Mountain Topper 3 Bander and many others that only do Morse code at their 5 watt output is working as hard, punching up if you uh, like the analogy, to as much as a 100 watt single sideband radio. I've discovered that demonstrations on the radio is often a lot easier than just uh, talking at you with something over and over again. So this is my 7610. You should be able to hear it now. Yeah. All right. So let, let's scroll over here. There's somebody talking. 589. It was scrapped whenever I bought it. And uh, Now this is an S9 uh, audio signal. Real loud. Plate, uh, I have a high it, noise environment uh, too. Built. Northern Idaho. CQ, 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 KE0, LSL, call on CQ and standing by. This is Kilo X-ray 7 Bravo Monster Papa, QSL. So he's in Portland, Oregon right now, and, and we're hearing him. Kind of a tough copy, though. Let's scroll down here to CW and see what we can hear. First, let me change the filter to CW. So we've got a 2.4 kilohertz wide filter on right now. Let's drop that down to CW. 500 hertz wide. 
There's somebody in there. And you can tell they're just barely licking above the noise floor. And you can see it's not it's not an S9 like it was in those other instances. We're just talking about a couple of S units and they're still fully copyable. I've got an S, a web SDR running. This one is in Fort Collins, Colorado. 100 watt single sideband. Here we go. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu test, test, Kilo test. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu test, test, test. Okay, that's me coming back. I'm about an S7 noise. I'm going to flip this over to CW and I'm going to give my call and then we're going to start gradually lowering the power, okay? Hearing that in my ear is kind of hard. <laughs> It's, it's offset low enough that I can't really hear it. So that's 100 watts, full copy, right? So let's just take it down to 60. I'm just saying test. Now we'll go down to 50. <laughs> it's, it's totally messing with me. You notice that it's getting, you can see it there, right? It's big, getting smaller, getting smaller. Let's keep going down. I think we're going to lose it a little bit before 10, but it's still a good example. Okay, 40. Let's try 30. I think we're going to lose it at 30. Yeah, I think we lost it at 30. Okay, so, well, hey, 30 uh, watts from 100 watts ain't bad at all. Why would someone want to use Morse code in today's environment? Well, it's a lot more effective to actually make an effective communication. Now, it's true, you have to learn Morse code, which is difficult. It's very difficult for some people, myself included. It's taken me a long time to get to the point where I'm actually copying all the characters. And I still have a hard time when someone's a little fast in copying every character and putting those words together. You get better over time, and it's a thing that really requires practice. You kind of have to like lay in that foundation of the letters and numbers, and then you have to practice it, like get on the air and actually use it. And there's ways to do that, and I've talked about it in other videos. In fact, I'll link some in the description below. But by that alone, that means that with something that you can fit in your back pocket, like an Elecraft KH1, the Mountain Topper 3 band, the QR, the Four States QRP Hill Topper, the QRP Labs QMX, this new radio that just came out that actually also does digital modes, which is really, really great, uh, but, but CW output. You're able to punch up again to reuse that term because I really like it and use Morse code as strongly as you could use single sideband. And so again, why is that? Well, so the, the bandwidth on Morse code versus single sideband is vast. Standard transmit on like a 100 watt portable single sideband transmission is going to be about 2.4 kilohertz wide. So a big wide bandwidth and that's going to have all the different nuances of your human voice and you're going to see it spiking up as it's on the waterfall if you're ever looking at a radio waterfall. That means that to have and maintain all of that nuance you have to send a lot of information via RF. You're using all of those 100 watts to send 2.4 kilohertz and sometimes wider, sometimes less, but mostly 2.4 over the air to the other station. So you're going to have a harder time pushing all that information versus Morse code. Sometimes it can be very low, but about 400 hertz wide. So a vast reduction in bandwidth. And the advantage is that unlike the nuances of voice, hello, this is all these different sounds for making different letters. When we're sending Morse code, it's either a dit or a dot. It's an on or no on, right? It's just the continuation of the same tone. And those tones can slightly vary between how far away the radio is, which radio they're operating on, and a numerous number of other things. But the simplicity of either an on 
oscillating tone or no tone makes it extremely easy to copy even in contested environments where there's a high noise floor. CW still gets through, whereas single sideband can get drowned out. So while not being the hottest performer, something as simple as this little True SDX, about a $135 HF radio, and yeah, this does single sideband too, but when running CW, can function almost as good as a 100 watt considerable single sideband radio. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting that point over and over again because it's really something to think about. This weighs nothing. A Morse code key, extremely light, a pair of earbuds, you don't even need that. This has a speaker, but you should use earbuds. The whole kit for doing Morse code is tiny, extremely small in comparison to a 100 watt ham radio field type radio, like a Yaesu FT891, for instance, which means you increase the weight of your kit and also the cost because this is $130. You're maybe all in for 400 bucks, including the bag and batteries and all that other fun stuff. And this will run a really long time on even a small battery. So it's pretty cool to think that even though Morse code is a form of communication that's been around with a, for a long time with a mode of operation called continuous wave, it's still totally effective and still very much appreciated and used in the amateur radio community because when all else fails, this is generally the type of mode that's going to get out versus other traditional modes like single sideband. So I will drop some informative links in the description. I am not affiliated with these recommendations. Where I am affiliated will be like an Amazon link or something like that. If you are so inclined to want to go learn Morse code, you should check out the Long Island CW Club. Again, no affiliation. This is a group that has 70 plus classes a week covering the I have no idea what this is, beginner all the way to the super advanced conversational CW operator. And it is an informal class structure where your baseline noob can go to the highest level of class and vice versa. It is a club that's extremely passionate about keeping Morse code alive by getting more people engaged. The only reason I'm making this video is one to answer this question, but to also encourage you to get on the air trying Morse code because that means there's more people like me out there that aren't that good at it, but we're still trying. And the more people like that, we're eventually going to get a little bit better and we're going to have a lot of fun. Plus, it rounds out your emergency communications planning. Yes, single sideband will still likely be key along with your FM transmitter for handy talkie, but nothing can beat the backup, possibly a backup of a backup, of a Morse code pocket-sized transmitter that you have available to you or just the, t the ability to decode and transmit Morse code on a standard radio. There's all kinds of value to that. You should consider it. Please take a look at the links in the description. If you enjoyed this, comment below or tell me why you think Morse code's not worth it or why it's the best mode ever and whatever your thoughts are regarding Morse code. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching and until I talk to you again, 73.